Well, here we have a very rare machine. You will not see this very often. Uh, nowadays, uh, KitchenAid's kind of dominant. Sunbeam, uh, I don't know, they're a shadow of their former self. I don't even see Sunbeam anywhere. Uh, and this is a Wolfgang Puck Cafe Collection Mixer. All right, this uh, Wolfgang Puck's Cafe Collection Mixer is uh, very robust. Model CMSD0020. Uh, they're calling it a commercial mixer. I beg to differ. Uh, 3KW8 E197899 made in China. So I'm sure that's the uh, serial number down there under commercial mixer. Uh, I worked in a restaurant for three years and we had all Hobart equipment. I really don't know any other names in the modern day restaurant business, but Hobart is still very dominant. <laughs> when I was a kitchen manager, you know, we'd mix, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 pounds of cornmeal to make hush puppies or something like that. I worked in a fish house. And <laughs> this doesn't come close. Uh, does come with uh, a whip and a dough hook and a general uh, mixer blade. Comes with uh, two pots, a large and a small, or should I say a wide and a narrow, or wide and deep. This one's a bit wider. And this one's a bit deeper, so depending on what you're making, whether you're making a box cake or bread dough. And this can handle bread dough. Uh, KitchenAid Artisan, uh, depending on how much, uh, how large your recipe is, will strip out the gears if you uh, try and make bread dough. That's right, the artisan is the bottom of the barrel, unless you, you know, don't have the money. Uh, if, if you're going to buy a cheap kitchen age, the artisan is the cheapest of them all, you know, you can get a pretty color. And, but for the most part, they are terrible machines. I highly do not recommend it. Uh, at least go up to the Professional Plus 5 and, or, or larger for the KitchenAid. They're much better motors uh, and the transmission gearing is much better. But anyway, we're here with uh, Wolfgang Puck and what we're going to do is we're going to change the grease in it. Alright, first we're going to remove the attachment connector here. Uh, it's just a cap. Uh, there's a hole there that captures the cap in here and uh, just remove that cap. Next we're going to remove the planetary gear. I have a 10 millimeter wrench. It's easy enough. Nothing to it. If I actually get a grip on it here. So it has a uh, Castle nut, lock nut, and a large washer, and the uh, planetary gear comes off. So, to disassemble the planetary gear, I see the rivet heads are up. I have four Phillips head screws. I recommend a P2 tip. Also, I recommend a large uh, stubby screwdriver so you can get a grip on it. Uh, the last thing you want to do is round out the head on a Phillips. You'll be really hating life. So you just kind of get that in there, get it started, get a good seat, make sure you're seated in there really well, get it started, get it started, and I'll show you another trick later. We'll take these uh, four screws out. So you have three screws holding the plate and one on the gear. The uh, gear screw is different from the plate screws. Uh, the plate screws kind of have a washer almost like molded into the top there. Then there's the high round head screw 
Phillips head screw for the gear. Also I say take pictures before you disassemble, as you disassemble. For example, the gear has two sides. This uh, one side has a cutout, this other side's kind of rounded if you look at the bottom. Just kind of dips down. And that's going to go on the square head of the gear. And then the cutout, the little valley there, just has the screw on it. Nothing else. So you can remove the gear. That'll just free up your post. Then you can remove your plate. And after you remove your plate, you'll see there's a washer down here. So there's, you can remove that washer. Goes right there. And now your planetary gear is disassembled and clean it up, grease it up, put it, and put it back together at the appropriate time. So I'm going to clean this up, re-grease it, set it aside. Uh, Reassembly is the opposite of uh, disassembly. Don't forget your washer that goes here. It looks like the only tricky part. I don't know if it makes a difference. I wouldn't think rivets up, rivets down make a difference, but the rivet head was up and the pop part of the rivet was down, so I'm going to reassemble it that way. You know, the post's pretty easy. you got your little pin there for your blades and a square top, so that's pretty easy to deal with. I'm not going to disassemble the spring and the clean in there. just going to wipe it down. Alright, so I have the planetary gear all cleaned up and uh, ready for reassembly. I'll set that aside. Um, now I'm just going to remove the gearing, clean it up, re-grease it, put it back together. I'm not going to deal with the motor. I'm not going to look at the brushes. It's just been at home. It's not been used commercially, so there's not that many hours on it, I don't imagine. It's just uh, the grease, you know, is aged. So let's get on that. Also, it's not leaking. That's usually a big sign. Uh, the reason I'm changing the grease is we might sell this, and I would like the new owner to get a fresh start and not have to deal any with anything for years. So I have four screws here at the bottom. I'm going to remove those. And while I'm removing the screws, I have a tray off to the side in the background here. Uh, keep track of your hardware. You uh, don't want to try and figure out later on where, where things go. Or have pieces left over. All right, with the bottom screws out, next we're going to have to go underneath the cap here, and it just twists off one way or the other. <laughs> Looks like it's going to go this way. So I just twisted it off, popped right off. This exposes this cap that locked the uh, top on. We'll take that off. All right, now you need to note these screws. We've got one here that is a fine thread like a machine screw and one that's a coarse thread. I call them plastic screws because they usually go in plastic when they're coarse like that. The two metal plastic screws <laughs> go in the back and the fine thread machine screw is going to go in the front. See there's also a plate on here that comes off. The big round holes for the machine screw and the two little holes are for the uh, I call them plastic screws. And then we also have three more screws to take out to remove the top. All right, I used my magnet. I could have just taken the top off, but whatever. Put those, keep those three together for reassembly. It should release the top if I'm not mistaken. There we go. Okay, it may not be a commercial blender by my definition but it's definitely robust. We have the transmission right here. It's a big gear housing that drives the planetary gear. Uh, it's belt driven and the motor assembly is back here. So we're going to need to uh, take the belt off. That should be pretty easy. Just pops right off. Next we're going to have to take the gear off and that is fun. <laughs> so 
I'm going to have to take it off and then explain to you what I did. So, here I am taking it off. And it's off. Now let me explain what I did. So as you can see, the gear has a hex in it to capture the nut. And here's the nut right here. So what I did is I took my screwdriver and I pressed the washer up against the nut and then unscrewed it like that using the gear of course now see it doesn't go all the way down so there's a little gap there for you to get your screwdriver in underneath there see how there's that gap so you get your screwdriver in underneath there pry it up and then turn the, the gear which turns the captured nut and boom off it comes magnets helpful remove the gearbox assembly we're going to need to remove these three socket head cap screws that's uh, five millimeter and then on the front we have two Phillips screws that go into the plastic housing here well, we can just take it right off and the reason it didn't come off right away is there's these keeps right here of course I wasn't in camera very good where am I here? So there's uh, these guides, these keeps, or whatnot that went on there. So just kind of wiggle that off. And there you go. Gearbox assembly. Alright, let's say this is full of uh, powder, you know, flour. There are four screws. Two down at the bottom and two up here. If you take those four screws out you can remove this plastic clean it up, put it back on. Again, I am not going to touch the motor. Alright, planetary gear is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to wipe it out, put grease on the gears and uh, that's pretty much it for that. Alright, we have six Phillips screws to take out to expose the gears so let's do that. Alright, so these uh, Six screws have like these star lock washers on them. Uh, so how, that's how you can tell them apart. They're different from the other ones. So we'll take those six screws out. All right, next we are going to separate the top of the transmission housing from the gearing. And there we have the gearing all separated out and as you can see it's already all greased up <laughs> that's because I am reproducing this disassembly took everything apart learned how it went uh, to show you uh, because the video was like ridiculously long so it was so long that uh, I, I just couldn't I just couldn't publish it so here I have everything all greased up. I'm going to take it apart, show you how it goes together, and then uh, we'll reassemble. So first on the housing, note that there's no grease up there. I had grease in it, and it just got in the way. It wouldn't close. It was just all kinds of issues. So that is a non-greasy thing. Also, the uh, accessory drive gear here that goes to the front of the machine. So, you know, if you have a meat grinder or whatever. Uh, that doesn't come out. You'd actually have to remove the bushing first. I couldn't get over it. I didn't want to force it. It's also keyed. Uh, there's like a key in there. You know, like this. Uh, so I just didn't mess with it. I just uh, greased it up, left it in there. And then these little pieces here, uh, where the top of the posts go in, put a little grease in there. And a little grease right here. It looks clean, but in the bushing... Uh, for the uh, belt gear, I uh, put a little grease in there, but it's such a tight, tight fit that it just cleaned itself out. So, uh, the post, I just left the ring and the key in place. I just cleaned it up. Now for the gearbox. Well, we have a bevel gear that comes off. Notice there's no washer on there. You can remove that. And the center gear, that comes off. And I'll show you something in a minute. 
and you have the back gear that comes out. What I wanted to show you is both the center gear and the next gear over to the right have a Belleville washer on them. So you want to be careful of that. Don't lose it. Uh, Belleville washer is kind of wavy as opposed to a flat washer. So it's kind of hidden in the grease here. But you might be able to see some black there. That's the Belleville washer for that one. The uh, belt drive gear just sits in a bushing. Uh, it has a washer too. I can get it out. So it has a washer, but it's a flat washer. It's just stainless steel flat washer. Then the front gear. It has a washer, sits on the bottom, large, flat, stainless steel washer. So we'll grease everything up like this. Uh, you'll notice, uh, even if you pack the gearing, that as soon as it goes around one time, all the grease is uh, pushed out, so you don't need to, like, put a ton of grease in there. Okay, for reassembly, I recommend putting the Belleville washers on the two posts here. And then we will take our main drive post, put the keyway in, put the bevel gear on, put the drive gear on. Notice that the keyway cut is, does not go all the way through. So it only goes on one way. Then we have our washer going on there. And we can insert it. And we're going to have to keep it sideways. Uh, next, we're going to put the smaller gear in place with the gearing up. Like that. And then this one, this gear is down and the large part of the gear is up for your medium gear. It's going to ride on there like that. Then we have our uh, belt drive gear. It's going to go on there. Make sure your washer's on there. And there we are. We're reassembled. All right. Before placing the cover on, since this is a metal-to-metal -metal seal, it's not a. There's no gasket on there, which is fine. I don't really see the oil separating and dripping out like the kitchen aids do. I mean, this one can. There are leak paths, but for the most part, not. Then what you need to notice is these two posts, one here and one here, are going to be the main driver until it sits down on the top of these two posts. And then also you have a guide pin here and here as it comes down. All right, the way I got this on is I just kind of tilted it back to get the back on. Of course, now it won't go on on camera. And once I got the back on, you can see it just, it just slides right down. And we'll put our six screws back in. They're the ones with the uh, star lock washers. All right, I have the planetary gear all greased up. And remember, you don't need to pile it in too much. Even this is overkill because, you know, once that gear goes around one time, all the spaces between the teeth are going to get, all that grease is going to get squished out of the way. All right, because the original filming went so long and you saw that I had already greased it up and everything, uh, I'm going to kind of cut to the chase. I'm just going to show you reassembly super fast. Step one, if you took the plastic off, make sure all four screws are in there nice and snug and tight. Next, you have these guide pins for the back. Right here, you have these two spaces here, and then it'll rest on top of the plastic piece here. So I just kind of put that in place. Make sure your front pin is in there correctly. Goes through the hole in this uh, black plastic cap. All right, just wiggled it up and it fell in place. Got my three socket head cap screws and my two what I call plastic screws. Alright, next I'm going to put on the planetary gear and it is keyed. You can see how it's keyed, so you need to make sure the washer that's underneath there 
allows the post to go through that it's not off center. And the reason I'm going to do that is because when I put the uh, belt gearing back on, I want to hold on to the planetary gear so I can snug it up. All right, next I'm going to align it, the cutout, so it'll slide right on there. So you're going to have to fight it. Also, you're going to have to hold it. You have a washer and a lock washer and get to hold all this stuff. And then you get this castle nut here and you get to screw that on. Get that started correctly, not cross thread. Then take your uh, 10 millimeter and tighten that down. Snug that up. Let's see it. Got it snug. So next, you can see this is turning. I can use that to my advantage to put the uh, gear back on. So, washer first. Then the nut on the gearing. Spin that on. You see it's up in the air. Then I can just snug it up. And I just need to snug it up. I don't really need to tighten it. I don't need to stick my screwdriver up in there and hold it. You know, that's it. It's snug. And if I spin it the other way, it's not going to come off. Belt. Belt goes on the large cog than the small one. It's just easier that way instead of trying to do it the other way. Alright, next we'll put the cover on and it's these three screws that hold it down. And then there are four through the plastic into the metal here on the bottom. Alright, I'll get these four screws underneath here. Remember they're fine thread, they're actually going into the metal, holding the plastic to the metal. Meanwhile, back at the top, we have our plate. Remember how it went? Large hole in the front, two small ones in the back. And again, our cap lockdown is going to be the uh, Again, the metal plastic screws, <laughs> and then the fine thread goes in the front. So we'll line that up, screw them down. All right, we'll put the cap on. Just snaps in place. It twists off, but snaps in place. Put the accessory drive in place. Got a hole in it that's held down. Okay, no leftover parts. And we have our Wolfgang Puck Cafe Collection Mixer Disassembly, Regrease, and Reassembly video done. And one other cool little tip, you can take a toilet paper roll and hold the cord with it if you don't like the cord going around all over the place. That's my final tip. Thank you for watching.